I, man, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ready for what? <laughs> it is uh, New York Con uh, 2024, day three, Saturday. And I'm here with R.L. Stein from Goosebumps. And uh, I, I guess you've also made the foray into comic writing. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so know, I'm, I'm having a great time. I always love comics, and yeah. now I'm writing them. So let's start there. Um, what do you remember the first comic that uh, you maybe read, or maybe the one that kind of hooked your um, interest? Well, when I was a kid, there were the great EC horror comics, mm -hmm. and you know, Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror, and I just loved them. I mean, they were gruesome, bloody comics. I'm this kid, and they're all, but the art was amazing, and they all had funny twist endings. And I just, you can see that's been very influential on me. But I just loved them. The, uh, my barber shop had a big stack of them, and I used to read them there. And uh, one day, I just loved these co horror comics. Mm -hmm. One day, I, I bought a couple. And I brought them home, and my mother stopped me at the door, and she said, well, you can't have these. You can't bring these in the house. <laughs> I said, why? What are you talking about? What? She said, it's trash. That's trash. I thought, oh, trash. Good. Trash. <laughs> so I, this is a true story. Mm -hmm. I used to, every Saturday morning, I would go get a haircut. So I could see, so I could, I had less hair when I was a kid <laughs> than I do now, just so I could read these comic books. So, obviously, you went into writing prose first. Um, no, I, I, no, I did comics. So in the fifth grade, my friends and I, we all started drawing comic books, okay. little comics. And um, I had this uh, superhero character. Uh, his name was uh, Super Stooge. <laughs> he was the worst superhero. <laughs> and um, I would draw these comics and pass them, bring them to school and mm -hmm. pass them around. And everyone, this is, everyone said, Bob, you can't draw. Your drawings suck. <laughs> and I look around. I said, really, I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. And I looked around. Everyone could draw better than me. Everyone. So I realized this was not going to happen. And, and I would have to write. But I did. people always ask me, what children's books did you read? Mm -hmm. What books did you like when you were a kid? And I didn't read books. I read only comic books. I loved them. My friends and I, we had big stacks. We would carry them around and trade <laughs> mm -hmm. them and read them. And then one day my mom dropped me off at the little, I grew up in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. Okay. She dropped me off at the library and the librarian was waiting for me. And she said, Bobby, I know you like comics. I have something else I think you will like. And she took me to a shelf of Ray Bradbury stories. Oh, cool. And that just changed my life. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, and did the, uh, and I'm going to assume that those Ray Bradbury stories kind of influenced you when you were developing Goosebumps. Well, yeah, I <laughs> stole, stole a lot. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> no, but he turned me into a reader mm -hmm. I hadn't read before, and the books were so wonderful. And then I just started reading Isaac Asimov and Robert Sheckley and all these uh, science fiction and fantasy, and he, you know, he turned me into a reader. He and that librarian. Do you have a what's your favorite Ray Bradbury book? So um, that was, you know, your well, first. Well, <laughs> I read Dandelion Wine once a year. Okay. Just to remember what good writing is. <laughs> Just, it's so wonderful. Every It's like poetry. But the book I always recommend to kids is Something Wicked This Way Comes, which is about a kid in the Midwest like me who sneaks out at night and goes to where they're setting up this carnival. And it turns out to be one of the most evil places on earth. It's a really scary, beautifully written book. I think the first uh, Ray, uh, Ray Bradbury book I read was The Martian Chronicles. So oh, yeah. Yes. That was, that was my introduction to Ray Bradbury. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting more, moving forward to your writing of comics, um, what made you, aside from your you know childhood love of comics, made you want to take the leap from writing prose to entering the comics um someone asked me <laughs> <laughs> no but i never i this is my major flaw in life i always say yes to things <laughs> i never say no to anything and uh, we were celebrating the 25th anniversary of goosebumps at the san diego comic-con 
And uh, this guy, Bryce Carlson from Boom Studios came over and we started talking and he said, you know, would maybe you'd like to do comic books? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, yes. So I would say yes. Yeah. And we were talking and trying to figure out, you know, what would be a nice thing to do. And uh, we did a middle grade, started out doing a middle grade series of graphic novels called Just Beyond. Okay. And the Goosebumps and the Comics are through Scholastic, is that correct? It did what? Through, through the Scholastic yeah. Company? Yeah, Goosebumps is published by Scholastic. Okay. We uh, we went we were at the uh, party last night where uh, Scott McCloud and uh, yeah so it, I didn't I so was I oh. so was <laughs> we we, heard we, were we, we heard the rumors but then we didn't go uh, <laughs> didn't go like looking <laughs> so um, yeah <laughs> so that when you were nice. it was a nice party <laughs> it, was, it was a great party yeah I didn't nice. know you, I didn't know you could do that much with cotton candy <laughs> yeah who knew <laughs> i know <laughs> so i've um, never done a cotton candy slapping out <laughs> no that might not be right actually. talk to the people of scholastic i'm sure they could hook you up <laughs> <laughs> um so was for you uh, was it was there a transition going from writing prose to you know translating it to the comic book uh format no comic books are much easier to write than novels because you don't have to describe anything. <laughs> See, I'm not I'm not great at description. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know a lot of flowers. I, I don't know trees. I don't know. I don't know anything. Uh -huh. So I, if we write a comic book, you say, he's walking through the swamp. The artist has to do the swamp. <laughs> I don't have to do the plants. I don't have to describe anything. It's like writing a TV script or a movie mm -hmm. script, I find, mm -hmm. and it, I just find it much easier. Now, when you're um, when you're working with the artist, uh, do you just kind of let them take the directions from what you're writing? Yeah, I, mean, well, I do put in some art directions, mm -hmm. but I never, I've never pretended to be an art. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I never <laughs> pretend to be an art director. Mm -hmm. Never. Okay. You know. Now. I mean, I make comments yeah. and I, you know, you look at the sketches and um, the inks and, you know, step by step by step. Here's what was weird for comic books for me is that in the process, the, the you know, the artist, the illustrator does little pencil, little thumbnails, mm -hmm. and then they do a pencil sketch. And then, and the words don't go in until the very last thing. Mm -hmm. That was really, I, I, surprised by that it was kind of strange for me yeah. the very last step is putting in the words and we've i've talked to a bunch of letterers and they, they you know they are always you know one of the questions is how do you you know make sure that you get the, <laughs> the get the words of the writer once in there without you know blocking you know yeah art. i know <laughs> yeah i know i know <laughs> it's a real skill so have you had do you, would you like to work on like some any mainstream characters? Um, well, you know, I my, my Marvel. Story, <laughs> if they ask you, if they ask you, you'll do yeah, it. I, I know, know that. By the phone, but, <laughs> no, I did a Ma Man Thing series for oh, Marvel. That's right. And I picked Man Thing because one, he was the ugliest character Marvel ever had, <laughs> and two, he wasn't part of the world. He wasn't mm -hmm. part of the universe, so I didn't have to learn a whole lot. Of you know, I could just set him, and I I gave him new powers that he hadn't had before. Man, thing, I gave him the power of speech. He could mm -hmm. talk again, and just so I could make it funny. <laughs> and people hate it. I don't know. That I did not comic book people. Did, they, 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 people they, they, no, they hated. They're that. so understanding about stuff like that. <laughs> no, I think it got horrible reviews. They didn't like that I changed Man Thing, right. and then I did five comics. Five and then I'm waiting by the phone. They never called me again. <laughs> Would you Marvel never? What about nothing. DC? Would you like? I mean, Swamp Thing seems to be it's okay. It'll come. <laughs> this boom is just bought by Random House. Okay, and uh, they're wonderful people. They're so so nice, and uh, Bryce is just a really good editor, mm -hmm. very smart editor, and he and I get along really well. And I'm really enjoying working with them. I, my new series is called The Graveyard Club. Mm -hmm. um, it's a YA series. Mm -hmm. uh, it's two graphic novels so far. 
about kids who live in a town that's just so dull and dead. The only place they can hang out is the graveyard. <laughs> and then they start to find out secrets about the town. And so I'm enjoying, you know, I just like working with them. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, obviously, uh, you know, Goosebumps was a cultural phenomenon, and, and now you're returning to writing, you know, for, for a YA audience. I'm curious what it is that you think is so attractive about the kind of horror genre for the younger audiences, right? In theory, it might be too scary for them, but kids find themselves gravitating towards it all the time. Like, what do you think is that kind of magic? I know when I started out, you know, I was funny. I never planned to be scary. <laughs> I did joke books. And I did a humor magazine. And when I started out, um, I did this first YA novel, teen novel called Blind Date, and it was a number one bestseller. And I, then a year later, I did one called <laughs> Twisted, number one bestseller. And I thought, yeah, forget the funny stuff. I'm going <laughs> to be scary now. But I didn't really. I would go to schools and I'd say, why do you like these books? Right. And every single time I say, we like to be scared. I learned, <laughs> this is what I learned. We like to be scared. I said, but don't you think these books are scary? And every time they said, not scary enough. <laughs> right so i mean it, this was a big discovery for me kids would rather have horror than the funny stuff <laughs> so looking back on your career as a writer what advice do you wish you had that you know now that you wish you had known then <laughs> oh i don't know i always, i have a standard joke for that okay. i always say <laughs> when bob, i would say to myself bob when 2008 comes around, get out of the stock market. <laughs> That's my standard line yeah. for that. Okay. <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't know what I would say. I, you know, I, I've been writing since I was nine. I was this weird kid in my room typing, typing these stories. <laughs> Why? Why did I like it so much? So I don't know if I'd have any decent advice for myself or not. Uh, I do have quite another question. Just you know, with with something like New York Comic Con, obviously one of the biggest pop culture cons in the world, you're here signing. You get you know lines of fans, and you said people bring you shopping bags, goosebumps mm -hmm. books. You know, what's what's kind of your take on the the fan interaction? What's the like? What's the thing that kind of uh, you enjoy the most about meeting? The fans? Well, it's very gratifying to me. Yeah. It's just you know people come and say you were my childhood. You know, we just captured '90s kids. Yeah, what a lucky thing. It's just luck. Yeah. And you were my childhood, or yesterday coming up and say, thank you for getting me through a difficult childhood. Right. Or I wouldn't be a librarian today if it wasn't for your books. That's just, you don't really think about that when you're sitting home typing the <laughs> sure. little stories. Right, right. You don't think about that kind of effect you have on people. It's just, it's very gratifying to me. Right. Do you have a favorite Goosebumps that you've, you know, of all the ones that you've written, or maybe? I have a few. A yeah. few, and or maybe one that I, you so like, oh, I wish I had done something different with that one or taken it a different no, direction. No, I never look at <laughs> I never look at them again. <laughs> I think The Haunted Mask is probably my favorite one. It's my best Halloween story about Carly Beth who puts on a scary mask mm -hmm. and it won't come off and it sticks to her face and changes her. Now, I'm I'm a little older, you know, past when you you were you, when uh, your books the goosebumps came out, but mm -hmm. um, I kind of equate goosebumps to m my growing up with the three investigators. Oh yeah, yeah. They, oh, that's so, nice. So, my so, brother and his <laughs> wife wrote some of those. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, those were the ones that I. Yeah, they wrote a bunch of those. Nice. So, um, any other anything else that uh, you wanted to? Mention about what you're currently doing, or um... what am I doing? <laughs> I'm revising a goosebumps that uh, my editor hated. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> did, did, did you tell you this. Listen, I know what I'm doing. Right. I've written a couple of them. No, <laughs> no, I have to go. No. Yeah, you don't. I don't get away with that. <laughs> no, because they're always right. No, okay. <laughs> uh, Mike, you have another question, really quick. Oh, All right. Well, uh, right. where can people uh, find out? more about you not that they really don't know about you are um no i'm everywhere are you on the, you on the social media <laughs> yeah I'm every instagram facebook and i do it all myself okay nice, I nice. Do my own I, yeah i like it awesome. i enjoy it i mean there is a website rlstein.com yeah i don't pay enough attention to it yeah. <laughs> so, well, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was great meeting you and uh, fun yeah, talking to you. Great. And yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoy the rest of your show if you're doing anything else besides <laughs> more signing, more signing. Yeah. Uh, Luckily, <laughs> I have a short name, <laughs> right? Yeah, definitely. No, was, listen. What if I was John? You know, what if I Harriet Beecher Stowe? You know, you're right in John uh, Fenimore Cooper. Yeah. Yeah, it was a no. it was a wise move to go with like the RL. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, best of luck to you in the future. I think you're going places. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat>